In this tutorial we're going to create a box morph on a surface. So this takes a geometry, any kind of geometry that you build either in Grasshopper and Rhino, puts a bounding box around it and then deploys it across a surface. So let's go ahead and start by making the geometry. I'll just make um, a box here and it can be any size and then we'll just do a sphere and then I'll just move this sphere around a little bit and then maybe I'll do a copy of the sphere vertically and then move this one over a little bit and then scale it to like 0.7 and then I'll just boolean these objects together so I'll do a boolean uh, two objects and I'll do that one more time Great, so I just have this kind of strange little geometry here and um, I'm actually going to explode this and then delete this outer box. So I just have these inner geometries. I'll then join those together and now I have my little geometry that I'm going to deploy across the surface. Um, the next thing I need is a surface. So I'll go to my front view and let's just draw a curve. something like that. Um, we'll go to our perspective view, I'll move this one over, and then I'll just loft these together. And then let's bring in the surface into Grasshopper. And then let's also bring in our geometry. So this could be, again, any geometry. It could actually be lines, doesn't have to be um, surfaces. So we'll bring this in, set one geometry, and then we'll go ahead and uh, let's move it over just so we can see it a little better and then we'll hide all of this. All right, our geometry and our surface. Okay, the first thing to do is to put a bounding box around our geometry. So it'll use this as a reference for deploying it across the surface. The next thing we'll want to do is subdivide our surface. So we'll use the ISO trim component, which um, looks like the subdivide surface component. Again, that's located under surface utilities plug our surface in there. And the next thing we need is a divide domain component. So the divide domain, which is located under math domain, it's the very bottom one down there, um, will allow you to divide the surface, which is the domain, into new U's and new V's, which then control where the box goes. So let's go ahead and say, uh, let's make a slider to less than 20, and we'll plug that into U, and that'll control the rows, and then we can control the columns with the V and then plug that new domain into our surface. The next thing we need is the surface box component. And so that's located under transform morph. And that basically puts a box on the surface of the surface. So we'll plug our surface in here. Uh, this is the new domain that we've created. So that'll be our domain. And then we can give this a height. So let's do a slider, say negative 20 less than 20. 0.00 and that essentially will be the height of the box on the surface so I'll just keep it you know right about there for now we can we can toggle these whenever I do a surface box I like to use a lower count just because if it's a complex geometry uh, it can take some time to compute if I have too many boxes on the surface so we'll go ahead and we'll start there and then the next thing we need is a box morph which is located under morph box morph and this will just take the geometry which is this bounding box. Um, actually, this is the geometry. We'll plug the G into the G, geometry into G. And then this is the reference box. So the bounding box around that geometry is what we'll use for reference. And then this is the target box. So this is the box that um, we're targeting that geometry to fit into. So it'll take a little while to compute, but there we go. So that puts a box, it puts your geometry in boxes and then deploys it and stretches it onto the surface. So you can see you can um, increase the number, for example. It takes a little while to compute, but you can toggle these to change the number of geometries that you have on the surface. So if we go ahead and bake that, um, we can see what it looks like. I'll bake it and then I'll preview this off. And then actually let's go ahead and select all of these, go to our properties, turn off show ISO curve. 
under properties just so we can see it a little better. And so there's the new um, deployed geometry in Rhino.